Welcome to the eResource series. In this set of tutorials, we will look at improving accuracy in subject-verb agreement. The first tutorial will focus on the basics. So what is subject-verb agreement? This is a teaching term, and some teachers refer to it as SVA. Let's look at an example. As you know, most sentences in English start with a subject. So in this sentence, the subject is air pollution. We're using the verb to be. I'd like you to think about which form of the verb is needed to make this sentence accurate. Of course, is is the answer. But do you know why? Subject-verb agreement is a common error for many students, especially in academic writing exams where you need to write quickly. So I'd like you to consider your accuracy in this area. Is subject verb agreement something that you could improve? Let's take a look at the first rule. Subjects and verbs must agree in number. A singular subject takes a singular verb, and likewise a plural subject takes a plural verb. But what does this mean? Let's look at an example. In this sentence, I'd like you to identify the subject and the verb, and also consider the tense. Well, of course our subject is the article, but we're only talking about one, which means it's singular. And as we can see from our rule, a singular subject takes a singular verb. Now this sentence is present simple, so I'd just like you to notice the form of the verb in the present tense form. Let's look at a second example. This is very similar to the previous sentence, but there's one difference. Of course, our subject is plural and therefore we need a plural verb. Just notice again the present simple form of the plural verb. This is a basic rule, and you should be able to write these types of sentences accurately, as they only have short subjects. But even with sentences with short subjects, there are some common errors. Have a look at these two example sentences, and notice the words in bold, pollution and information. I'd like you to think about the word form. They're both nouns, and they're both uncountable nouns. Now, uncountable nouns can sometimes cause problems because students are not too sure of the rules. So, what is the rule? Let's have a look at the verbs. They're both singular, and as we know, singular verbs require singular subjects. So the rule for uncountable nouns is that they're treated as singular subjects and therefore take a singular verb. Now, uncountable nouns are important in academic writing. I would start to notice and record common academic uncountable nouns as you go through the UEC 20 course. To get you started, here are some of the common academic uncountable nouns that are included in many of the readings that you're going to come across in UEC 20. So, we've looked at our first basic rule for subject-verb agreement. It's now time to take a short quiz to test our knowledge.